Hi everyone, a very warm welcome to my channel, Booked Line and Sinker. Today I'm going to be talking about contemporary Indian women writers to reckon with. Now these are authors who have been published in the last couple of years. Their writing has been recognized both in India and globally for its impact, for its beauty. And these are writers you should definitely be reading and looking out for. If you're new to my channel, I'm Nimisha. I'm a voice artist and a book lover. And on this channel, we have inspiring conversations about books and all things related. So if you're looking for book recommendations, reviews, reading tips, author specials on both Indian as well as foreign authors, you've come to the right place. Do give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications because every time you do that, you give me a little more visibility on YouTube. Well, let's get into today's video. Okay. The first author I want to talk to you about is Avni Doshi, who's written the book Girl in White Cotton, which has been uh, long listed for the Booker Prize. It's been published abroad as Burnt Sugar, I think. And this book really made me uncomfortable, but it's really good. So the story is about a mother and a daughter, uh, their relationship. It's a very toxic, damaged kind of relationship that the two have. The book opens with the mother being uh, diagnosed with Alzheimer's and she's beginning to forget uh, her past and everybody around her. And her daughter is forced to take on the role of the caregiver to her mother. The story moves from past to present and it talks about a young Antara's childhood uh, and how she's been neglected from almost the day she was born and prior to that her mother goes through a divorce, moves to an ashram where she takes her daughter with her and after that when they leave the ashram what happens to the mother-daughter duo? Uh, they're forced into beggary, she's sent into boarding school and the relationship between the two becomes extremely bitter and wild. Antara, the daughter, uh, is shown constantly longing for acceptance and love and family while her mother, who's hippie and crazy, um, you know, suffers from her own internal demons and fails to provide her with that comfort which you expect from a parent. Avni, though she doesn't use very big or descriptive words, yet she manages to uh, paint a picture full of emotions in this book. It took me a while to get invested in this novel, but uh, I didn't even figure out when uh, I got sucked into it. And it drew out some really odd emotions in me. There was a lot of discomfort. I had kind of butterflies in my stomach by the end of this read. And it, um, it gave me pinpricks. You have to read it to really uh, know what it's all about. It's dark. It's dark. It's really dark. I'm gonna give this book a four stars. I'm Another really fantastic new author whom I've read is Madhuri Vijay who's written The Far Field. This book was uh, the winner of the JCB Prize for Literature in 2019. This is the story of Shalini who's from an upper middle class family in Bangalore and she loses her mother and to uncover secrets behind her mother's life she decides to make a trip to Kashmir on a whim. This journey for Shalini becomes a life transforming uh, experience because she is a woman who's searching for her own identity. She's grieving, she's sad, she's missing her mother. The story is about complex family relationships, uh, Kashmir and political drama over there as well as, you know, class divide between the upper middle classes and the lower middle class. There were two things which I absolutely loved about this book. One was the characters. They are so, so well drawn out. Shalini, her mother, her father, Bashir, uh, people of Kashmir, whoever she talks about. Very, very well crafted. I also loved the relationships which she has drawn between the characters, which are complex relationships, but written so simply that they are very relatable. I'm going to give this book a four stars. A recent book which I've read is The Henna Artist by Alka Joshi. The story is based uh, in post-independence India in the 1950s and there is this hangover of the British in the air. The story revolves around the life of uh, the henna artist and healer Lakshmi who leaves her husband and comes to live in Jaipur and is later joined by her 13-year-old uh, sister Radha and their lives in the corridors of the rich 
rich and famous uh, of the time in Jaipur. Also Lakshmi, the main protagonist is a healer. So there is a lot of uh, detailed descriptions of, uh, you know, items which we as Indians commonly use for healing purposes like ginger, turmeric, uh, but also other stuff like lavender, and potions, and um, which I thought was quite nice. Through the course of the book, Radha, the younger sister, she gets pregnant and how their lives change after that. Alka Joshi talks about the condition and treatment of women. She touches upon subjects of inequality, violence, uh, abortion, marriage, you know, how marriage was uh, the end all and be all of life at that point in time. And women were expected to, uh, you know, just get married and produce kids. Also, class divide is a theme which runs through this entire book. This book is going to give you a lot of insights into Indian society and culture at that time. It's definitely a well-written book and I would give this a four stars. Latitudes of Longing by Shubhangi Swaroop. Now this is Shubhangi's masterful, ambitious debut novel which was the recipient of a number of awards in 2018. The writing in this book is, in simple words, beautiful. It reads like poetry, like prose. The descriptions of nature, of earth are breathtaking. They're lush. Uh, I mean, the language, you just go back to the language. Again and again in this book, the language is striking. It's stunning. Coming to the story, it's a series of interconnected stories, uh, which begins in the Andamans, where this young scientist, Girji, is married to uh, Chanda Devi, who's this clairvoyant woman who can connect to nature and things like that. The next story moves on to their maid and her son who is imprisoned in Myanmar. The third one goes to the son's friend Thapa in Kathmandu and then to Apo in the Karakoram mountains. The width and scale of this novel is massive. There's a lot of uh, research which has gone into it which is actually pretty obvious. For me personally, I felt that the first half was way better in terms of the plot and the story uh, than the second half. And I felt that somewhere Shubhangi got lost in the makings of her own poetic language. Having said that, I think she's a novelist who is going to come into her own with her subsequent books. Uh, not that this was not good, this was really good as well, but she's one to look out for. I'd give this book a uh, three and a half stars. So friends, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Drop me a line in the comment section below as to which were the Indian contemporary authors whom you've enjoyed reading, men or women. I'd love to hear from you. The names I've mentioned today are there in the description box below if you want to check them out again. Like, share, comment, subscribe and follow me across social media because I take out a new video every week and you don't want to miss it. Well, until the next book, bye-bye.